One of the best ways to add new modded dungeons to Skyrim is by giving us a new world space. And when I say that, I'm not expecting everything to be on the same size and scale as some of the bigger known new world mods, like Worm's Tooth, Falscar, and so on. But having a new location outside of Skyrim gives the mod author a bit of a new playground to work with. Something that allows them to build out their own brand new zone, rather than trying to find ways to incorporate new dungeons into Skyrim's already busy world space. And today's mod is a great example of this, and that is Siege at Icemoth by Roast Gorilla. This adds a vanilla-esque new land consisting of a small chain of islands set in the Sea of Ghosts, with the titular Fort Icemoth sitting in the center of the isles, and acts as our main hook for sailing this far north. The one quest in the mod begins and ends with the fort, but opens up exploration of the other islands in the region, one in each of the four cardinal directions. Completion of Fort Icemoth's quest grants you some new gear inspired by the Elder Scrolls Blades, as well as the Topaz Dragon Claw, which is needed in order to unlock the Nord Barrow on the Western Isle. The Northern and Eastern Isles come with their own locations as well, mainly small caves without much notable loot, but the final island to the south sports another Nordic Barrow and I'll go into these locations a little bit more at the end of the video. To get started, you'll need to find the old wooden jetty, not too far west from the icewater jetty that you would use to reach Castle Volkahar. Here, you'll find a dead mercenary, who sailed back to Skyrim despite his fatal wounds after an expedition gone wrong to Fort Icemoth. An Imperial named Maris Antonius had hired him and a couple other mercenaries to retrieve a unique ring called the Band of the Wraith, only to come under attack from the undead skeletons inhabiting the fort. You'll take his boat and sail to Fort Icemoth in hopes of claiming the ring for yourself. Deal with the source of the undead at Fort Icemoth. Oh, and there's a little company warehouse. Here's a little company office. I do like that they're using the Raven Rock set. I see you over there. You... See me, I see you. Okay, he's not taking aim. No, I'm just gonna go inside the warehouse real fast. I'll, I'll deal with you later. I see a book. Is that gonna be a journal or just... Okay, just <laughs> a regular book. I'm not sure if there's really gonna be anything of note down here, but, you know, just taking a look around... I guess it would make sense that they would have more East Empire pendants here. I mean, why not? Why wouldn't they have them here as well, right? Yeah, nothing really of note. You got a Horker Tusk and a Bull. <laughs> if you want that, if you were looking for a Horker Tusk, boom. There you go. And I do like that the Isle is named separately because the fort is Fort Icemoth, but it is part of the Hjorkvild Isles, which I guess the... Horker Tusk makes sense, given the name. I'm really wondering if I can find the other members of the expedition, if I can go to the Nord Town. I guess we'll see. Ooh, you missed! Ooh, okay, <laughs> that's what I get for taunting him. That's what I get for saying, oh, you missed. Ooh, okay. A little stronger than your average skeleton, which very okay with, very all right with, given that this is meant to be, you know, a siege. Regular skeletons, they just, they crumble apart the second you even look at them, so that wouldn't make for the, uh, the greatest siege. Now what? The most exciting siege. I'm gonna open the gate, I, oh, okay, oh, hello. So we have the regular skeletons. We do have the regu regular fall apart. <laughs> Just falling apart as you sneeze at them skeletons in addition to the more kind of like buffed up ones. The more unique, the newer ones. So that's a good mix. That's a good way to do with them. Hello? Wait. Oh, there you are. <laughs> he forgot we were fighting. He forgot that we were enemies, that we don't like each other. So I was mentioning the 
town. Yeah, we have a few different islands we can go to, it would seem. Can I use the boat to go to each of them, or do I swim there? But we have a couple different, like, marked locations out here. Yeah, and it's got its own world map and everything. Oh, look at this! Alright, I'm already just really impressed by that, frankly. Yeah, we're in the middle of this kind of, like, little chain of islands, and I can open up the world map and see all of them. Very impressed. Alright. We might be here a little bit bit longer than I expected, and once again, perfectly fine by me. I'm more than happy to have a little bit longer of an expedition here. I wonder if Maris is still alive. I, I wonder if this is gonna be a, everyone's dead, just go about your day, or if I can find someone. Now, as is the tradition in Skyrim, everything turns into... A stealth archer playthrough? I was hoping that would kill him. I was really hoping that'd be a one-shot, one-kill. Eh, close enough. I still managed to get through it without them really knowing I was here. Are you alive? Whoop. Well, not anymore. Now, the thing that I'm curious about is... The mercenary that we found made it sound like these skeletons could reanimate even after being killed, so I want to know if there's something deeper in the ruin that would cause reanimation, or if we would even see them reanimate ourselves while we're here. Because we also need to find a key. Did you see him equip his shield right as the bolt was about to hit him? I'm guessing he kind of, like, noticed or detected me right before... The attack landed, so he just got his weapons ready. But yeah, we need a key in order to access the main building, or what it seems like is going to be the main building of the fort. What I also like about Fort Icemoth is that both naming convention-wise and kind of design-wise, it does feel very reminiscent of the old Imperial <sighs> Legion forts that we had in Morwind, in the Elder Scrolls III Morwind. Because you had Fort Moonmoth, Fort Frostmoth. Like, that was generally the naming convention for a lot of the forts. And just once again, design-wise, layout-wise, feels very similar to that as well. We did see it a little bit in, you know, the Dragonborn DLC, because we see the ruins of uh, Fort Frostmoth. But it makes sense that there'd be more forts outside of just Morwen that follow that sort of convention, you know? Oh, I was hoping you were going to have a journal, too. Well, you know, I found you. One thing that I often talk about missing is I do miss the zombies from the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. And I know they added the Creation Club pack for zombies for Skyrim, however, they just use regular unarmed uh, animations by default. So it just looks kind of awkward because it's just zombies coming up to you and punching you. The same animation that you would use if you were running up to someone and punching them. Rather than these fun, like, shambling animations which you would expect and want uh, from zombies, personally. Yeah, we have the Steel Soldier Shield, which I'm just going to grab. But I have that just from, well, go figure, one of the uh, creation pit packs. I don't actually know if anyone ever made, like, the zombie animations as an add-on, as a mod for the creation club pack. N now that I say that, now that I'm thinking about that, now I'd be curious. Because I have the exact same problem with the... Boost! With the Ash Zombies from the uh, Ghost of the Tribunal ah! pack. Once again, they're just, they run up to you and they just punch you. <laughs> it just looks kinda awkward. And... Down you go. Now, do you have the key that I need? No. Well, you know, we're not done here yet. There's still more. He just seemed like he was in a position where he might have a key. 
Ooh. <laughs> Do you like how I get impressed by stuff like new furniture? What can I say? It's, uh, it's a nice little touch. I like seeing new models, I like seeing new textures, just, you know, immediately my eye goes to him like, oh, look at that. I feel like it's one of the most guaranteed ways to make me interested in anything. Just <laughs> slap some new furniture in there, and I'm very, very happy. Ah! You uh, weren't very astute. You, you weren't really very aware of your surroundings, now were you? Okay, so I still need a key to get out. Even though we're on the inside, we still need a key to unlock it. They're probably pointing us to the exact person that has the key, mind you, so all I gotta do is just kind of follow it, pay attention, act like I know where I'm going, and act like I know what I'm doing. Oh. Hello. Once again, you guys aren't necessarily the most astute. I do like your furniture, though. <laughs> I do very much like your furniture. Oh. Oh! Oh, hello! We found Maris. We found him. I, I didn't even see him. He just came up behind me or was summoned. Yeah. Well, would you look at that? Okay. A new model for this ring. Cascadia, one-handed attacks do 20% more damage, increases magic resistance by 20%. I'm gonna wear that right now. Watcher's Blade is new, Watcher's Helm is new, or rather, I believe they're specifically from the Elder Scrolls Blades, the mobile game, which, um, one thing I've continued to say many, many times is that one thing I loved about Blades was the new weapons and armors, and I'm very glad they brought a lot of those over with Creation Club stuff, but obviously not everything was brought over, so other mods that add this stuff make me very, very happy. Band of the Wraith, this is what Maris was looking for the entire time. Magic regenerates 30% faster, Conjuration spells cost 35% less to cast, and when health is low, has a chance to summon up to two Corrupted Shades. We got our key. Okay, so interestingly, even though we're done here, we finished the quest even, we still have the, um the other aisles to explore and everything. Oh. Oh, yeah, we're very much not done then. Topaz Dragonclaw. Okay, we do have a journal for him. Map updated. Day 66. It's been about two months since I set out to these islands. My research has benefited greatly as well. I've made more progress in these last two months than the previous six when I was in High Rock, all because there was almost no one to interfere. There is that Nord village which the locals named Yolgen, though they mostly keep to themselves. I do look forward to experimenting on them, however. Those Nords are so dull that they'll probably be smarter as my thralls. All in all, another benefit to coming out here. It's so isolated that Solitude or whoever these islands belong to won't even notice as there aren't even any patrols out here. Plus, I doubt the Legion will be back here anytime soon. The fort's been abandoned for almost two decades already. Day 71. I finally decided to stop procrastinating and decide that today was the day to launch my attack on the village. Now that my army is large enough, what those Nords lack in intellect, they make up for in strength. And I couldn't afford them going back and contacting the mainland if my raid failed. Lucky for me, and I suppose unlucky for them, my raid was successful, with no witnesses to contact the mainland. Day 92. Today, one of my thralls found what appeared to be an ancient Nord Dragon Claw key. One of the keys used to open the large stone doors in some of the old Nord barrows. It's funny how ancient Nords were clearly a lot smarter than they are now, but back to the point. I'll probably head off to investigate the other isles some more in the coming day, as my thralls also found some ancient tattered books mentioning some sort of secret power or hidden knowledge in one of the isles. It would definitely be a boon to harness anything extra that may benefit my research while I'm out here. 
And that is the end. Uh, yeah, let me get outside. Let me take a look at the map, because we now have an updated map. Yeah, for Fiolgen. I'm wondering if the other islands are even places that we can go to. I like that it says the sailboat's been cleared. I, I don't know why, I just, I, I like that. In, in case you were worried, in case you weren't sure, uh, now you are. Because I immediately got off my boat and just looked up the island, I didn't turn around and notice that we had Maris's boat here the whole time. A uh, little rickety, but I also see what they mean when they said, oh, the hold wasn't big enough to hold all of us. Ah, yes, the Murrow Pearl. My new boat, my new quote-unquote ship. Ooh, we got hammocks, though. Listen, I wish the hammocks were usable. I would love uh, to sleep in a hammock right now. Or in general, I, I would love a hammock in real life, too. Okay, so unfortunately, I can't seem to use the Merle Pearl. What about my sailboat? I do like that it's rocking. If it says... Okay, yes, here we go. Here we go. This is what I was hoping for. This shows everything that I was looking for. Fort Icemouth, Fjolgen, all of the islands. All of them as well as Skyrim. Right now, our clue is for Fjolgen. So we're going to go there first. Damn. Damn. <laughs> I've been at sea for uh, maybe an hour, probably less, because it's not very far away, and it's already raining. Oh, I just got caught in the rain. Uh, one thing to note is that there is um, a compatibility for the fishing creation add-on, so that's why you are going to see some of the stuff pertaining to that. I don't have it on this save. This is still a pre-anniversary save because I have what, three different Skyrim installs right now, I think? Or something like that? Now the question is... Is the ruin here, which it looks like, it, yeah, because we have a monument and we have a barrow, so I would imagine what I'm looking for is on the Fjolgen Island. Once again, this is bigger than I expected, because I've really went insane, like, oh, okay, we're gonna go to the fort, we're gonna get some cool stuff, the end. And here I am, now being very pleasantly surprised, I was incredibly pleasantly surprised the second I, um, you know, got the dragon claw, and I went, oh, there's more. And yes, I completely sidestepped the, uh, the Barrow's entrance just to see what was here. This might just be, like, a named point. This might not have anything to it, but, you know, landmarks are also good. Just having named landmarks, it helps to flush these out locations a little bit more, too. Winter Shroud Sanctum. Discovered. And, yeah, I don't have a quest for it yet. There's no quest, miscellaneous or otherwise, so it's really just on you to kind of explore and figure it out. Oh, and we got the claw right at the beginning. Well, we're gonna use it again. I haven't even looked at the symbols on it yet. There's no way we're not using it another time today. It's a trap. See, I, you know, it's 12 years later. I'm finally getting better at noticing traps in the game. It's about damn time. <laughs> not very observant today. Like, I'm not that quiet. I'm not that sneaky running around yelling about traps. Running right up behind you. You really should uh, be a little bit more observant, frankly. I'm wearing all heavy armor, too, for what it's worth. Do you think I could use... Whirlwind Sprint to get over there? What? That's a yes, kind of, because I was right on the edge and I had to mash jump a little bit to get here. Which, this is just a bonus chest anyway, so... Yeah. I'll take the lot. I can afford to carry it, so why not? 
I almost made that jump. I probably could have. I just didn't need to. So I wasn't all that worried about it. I'm gonna get not lost in here, but I'm gonna be in here for a little while, aren't I? Not necessarily a bad thing. I was just kind of checking to see if there's anyone else in the room. I think it's just her. <laughs> back to sleep you go. Can I just uh, pick this up and just seal you back in there? I know there's no duct tape in Skyrim, but if I could get some duct tape and just seal you back in there, just tape you back in there, that'd be great. Despite all the different ways to go... Okay, nope, never mind. I was gonna say, despite all the different ways I can go, it seemed I found where I need to be. I'm gonna have to light the two fires, these kind of like cold fires. And I would imagine in these two corresponding towers, right? That makes sense to me. In my mind, that sounds like something that would make sense. Oh, here we go! Oh, you know, this doesn't get used enough. This really doesn't. Oh, oh, that was very close. Oh. Okay. I almost didn't make it just going at a walking speed. So, Owl, Eagle, ooh, alright, that got completely buried. They really, oh no, they kind of kept the corner of it. That, that would be Fox, I would imagine. No, Whale. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, Fox, go with your first instinct. Your first instinct is sometimes the best one. Fox, eagle, owl. And... See? There you go. One fire lit, one to go. Do you think this one's gonna be better or worse than the other one? Okay. Uh, okay. Alright, I was really hoping it was gonna go all the way back a little bit. Ooh! Almost didn't make it. That was with sprinting, too, but I also got a little tripped up because... I think it took every path imaginable. I think it took every turn possible. Snake, dragon, I was gonna say moth butterfly. Whatever. Alright, I do like that there was something a little bit more involved to open that door. And I do like that we're using um, the little keyhole pedestals, because once again, they don't get used all that often in the base game. So reusing, um, you know, base game functions like that, that aren't used all that much. It's always nice to bring a little bit more personality to these dungeons, I feel. You know what? Let me take a look to see what the claw is. Because I have a feeling we're going to need that soon. It is Eagle, Butterfly, Dragon. Oh, so uh, <laughs> all the sky creatures. Or at least all the flying creatures. You, uh, you thinking there? Oh, you're, you're dead. It's hard to tell sometimes. You can't always be too certain. One. Ooh, that looked like it was going to miss him, but fortunately, the hitbox was generous. Are you alive? Uh, well, now you're not. This is going to try and stab me. No? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I really thought I was going to have to worry about those spikes. Unless there was another pull switch that set them off that I just didn't notice? I don't think so, no. They're just trying to trick me. They're trying to fool me. So there we go. There's my stone wall. Let me just see where this leads first. Okay. That answers that. <laughs> that answers that. 
Even after all these years, I still love the Dragon Claw doors. Just the animation and spinning the wheel for it, I don't know. Um, it's very satisfying. Even after all these years, it still feels great. Hello? Oh, okay. Got a... Oh, I, I thought that was gonna be something... <laughs> Unique, it was just a ruined book. And do you like how I immediately went for it rather than uh fighting Tovanon? Which he's got a mask, so new Dragon Priest mask. I see you. Oh, I know you're there, I, I see you. I also know I was standing on fire and getting a little crispy there, a little burnt. I'm just searing like an Ahi tuna. That delay in shouts, it still gets me sometimes. Alright, and they're all dead. Tovanon prices are 10% better, increases speech skill by 20 points, increases stamina by 20 points. So the other... Islands might just kind of be disconnected in the sense that they might not tie into other quests. Because even this technically didn't have a quest in the end. No dragon wall? It makes sense. I'm not expecting the mod to add new shouts. But having a ruined dragon wall still, in my mind, works. In my mind, lore-wise, it makes sense for that to be there. Oh. <laughs> well, no word wall, but... That's certainly a surprise. They really added everything to this mod, didn't they? This is a nice surprise. I actually very... Very pleasantly surprised by the amount of content in this right now. Yeah. Oh, the the book is right there. Where is the scry going to be then? Oh, okay. Chapter one footnote. Yeah, that's the only way to go right now. Well, here's our scry. And another scry and a seeker. You think you're so sneaky, but I can just see you shimmering in the corner. You're not as stealthy as you think you are. Now that... Yeah, that should open the gate back in the first area then. I like that it was labeled as a footnote. It's very fitting. It works well for, uh, for Apocrypha, you know. Apocrypha is also fun for me because it's a great opportunity to add puzzles to the game. And I like puzzles. As I've always said, I'm not necessarily the best at them, but I enjoy them. I like them. And... Down you go. Another... Scry. That's gonna spawn a, uh, a lurker right there, yep. <laughs> Once again, I know what's going on here. It's not my first rodeo in Apocrypha. I was hoping it would stagger him, but it's fine. Down he 
goes. We're gonna need another scry for that. Oh, here it is. How many chapters do you think this is gonna be? Oh. <laughs> uh, two. That answers my question right there. Which, also a perfectly acceptable number. Perfectly fine number. I don't necessarily need it to be all that much longer than that. I am wondering if we do get a perk, though. I'm hoping we do get a perk out of this. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, we do. Omen of Warding. Omen of Immobility. Omen of Gluttony. When used, you take no fall damage for 15 seconds. Very nice. Cast on a nearby surface. It explodes and freezes the target in place for 10 seconds. Makes sense. Food is significantly more effective for 10 seconds. For me, uh, fall damage is gonna be the way to go. Have you seen me? I just, I jump off everything. Like I said, that was a nice surprise. That was very much a welcome surprise. I like the little, uh, hidden entrance. I do like that. So back to the boat. Back to our new... <laughs> very seaworthy, very trustworthy sailboat. There is one additional unique item that can be found by Endus's Folly. A shipwreck to the northeast of Fort Icemoth itself. Going down a small underwater cave near the rear of the shipwreck, you'll find the Crimson Kiss Ring, which increases your health by 20 points and reduces destruction spell cost by 30%. Also, I was mistaken in saying that the Steel Soldier Shield was from the Creation Club pack. It was actually made by the author themselves and is available as a separate mod down Load in case you're not using Fort Ice Moth. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the real points of interest for me were the Fort and Winter Shroud Sanctum, which was located on the Western Isle alongside Fjolgen. The fort itself had a straightforward but well done quest, which then led into getting the Topaz Claw pointing you towards the Barrow and granting you not only a new Dragon Priest mask, but also a Black Book with its own unique perks. Looking at the mod page, Winter Shroud Sanctum had originally been planned for the Beyond Skyrim Cyrodiil mod, and despite being cut from the project, now gets to live on in this one. Another thing that I noted in the Sanctum was the Ruined Word Wall, which the mod author apparently plans to update at some point to include the Plague Breath Shout from the Elder Scrolls Online. The other islands in the mod didn't have the same kind of hook or lead-in that these first two islands did. There were a couple of very short caves, one with skeletons, another with ghosts. The final island, to the south, did have a second Nord Barrow, which, while it didn't have any unique gear or quests, it did still make use of a couple puzzles, and overall, it still felt like a really well-designed, vanilla-esque dungeon. This second Nord Barrow, Gorin Hall, is accessible through a small underwater cave, which I found to be a really unique way to hide the entrance. And that's one thing I really want to praise here, the world design and level design for the three bigger dungeons that the mod had. Given that the mod is called Siege at Ice Moth, I would almost say that everything after the fort is just kind of a bonus for the player. And I can see these smaller caves and the second Nord Barrow working well as locations for Radiant Quests. Like I said, I think new world spaces such as this serve as one of the best delivery systems for new dungeon packs. And the use of the boat to get around, the new world space map, and more help to make the mod feel very well implemented. For those of you who use the Lawbringer mod, there is an add-on for Ice Moth, allowing you to claim the fort for Hafingar Hold, the Kingdom of Jahana, the Imperial Legion, or the East Empire Company. This was ultimately a very welcome surprise. I went in just expecting a short quest focused on claiming the fort, and instead I got to play through two very well-designed Nord Ruins. 
And yes, I realized that I only focused on one of them for the video, but like I said, the second one would work really well either as a radiant location or if it was part of the Plague Breath Shout when it gets added to the mod. Siege at Ice Moth is available for Skyrim Special Edition for both PC and Xbox, and the Lawbringer add on is available for both systems as well. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, check out the Patreon or the YouTube memberships, both of which get access to the Discord server. YouTube members also get access to the channel emotes, which can be used in the video comments below. And make sure to check out the streams at twitch.tv slash zero period productions for various talks about the game industry, modding, and more. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.